This is the Steve Zabin Show. Well, huzzah, huzzah. On the Team 980 and 95.9 FM. You know, they're fun guys to be around for the most part. Along with Scott Lynn and Steve Solomon, here he is, the Zabe. Hold on my to-do list. Change the open. That's the first thing. They're fun guys to be around for the most part. This is going to be... A challenging day. What's up, everybody? It's a Friday. I'll leave it at that. I don't even have the the the, the zeal uh. to play Rebecca Black today. But you heard the update from Solly. Uh, the rubber has met the road when it comes to Dan Snyder and his minority partners. I don't know who has the upper hand in this. Whether or not Snyder can uh, fend off this sale. Whether it is going to be an all-out struggle for the team. I know this. I know who I'm rooting for. And it's not the belt buckle kid when it's all said and done. All right. Welcome to the show. It's a Friday. Uh, a Friday that shall live in infamy. Uh, November 20th, 2020. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Zabin Sala here, and that's it. Uh, Scott Lynn has been fired. Fired's not the right Let word. Go. Let go. Released. Let Does it really matter? Fired is a bad Let word. Go. Uh, yeah. Um, Fired is a bad word. Uh, we're all going to get fired at some point. Um, that's the bottom line in any industry. But I like to say I've been radio. laid off nine but times yes. in radio, not fired. I've been laid off as Scott. Yeah, I think firing is like you... For cause. You know, you're bad. You never get fired because... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's happened is, uh, and it's amazing how even some of my closer circle friends who are pretty savvy about the industry, and they've talked to me about the industry don't even know what has happened because they're living their own lives. They didn't get the press release that Entercom Inc., one of the largest radio conglomerates in the country, along with iHeart and Cumulus, and who would be the fourth biggest? Uh, Urban One with their anyway, 68 yeah. stations in 14 markets. No. <laughs> no. No. no, Urban One is a, is a smaller they're ship smaller, on, yes. on the ocean. But, um, yeah, so anyway, um, Entercom with Urban One engineered a station flip in multiple markets where it's like they looked at their trading cards and they said, well, we got this, this, and this. this These two FMs and an AM. Yeah, and they basically said, hey, you know what? We're not good at this. You're not good at that. How about we give you this? You give us that. And they they flipped a bunch of stations. So Entercom, which owns WJFK 106.7, they got 980 and all these so-called intellectual property, which would be the existing uh, employees, uh, contracts, and other, you know, IP for what it's worth in the exchange. And this was two weeks ago we heard about this. And we have been playing with the sword of Damocles hanging over our heads now for two weeks, showing up to work, doing our best to give you guys the best show possible because you don't need to know about this drama. Plus, we didn't know what was going to happen. Now, it appears like, from what I've been told, prelimina- preliminarily, and this is very preliminarily, and who knows if it could change, that the new company plans to operate both, just not with everybody that was doing things here at this station. So, Scott was told he will not be part of it going forward. CJ, our program director, was told he would not be part of it. And I understand that Doc Walker was told he will not be part of it. Now, that's just today. Who knows about tomorrow or Monday or next week or next month? Now, you got to give it a fair shake and say, all right, I'm I'm, I'm listening. Let's hear what you're going to do and how you're going to work this. At one time, these two stations were on par with each other, which is kind of remarkable because, let's be honest, 106.7 signal is a goddamn (laughs) blowtorch, and you can get it everywhere. And it sounds glorious. And I have talked with a number of people over there at that hamburger stand about their signal. And I have said to them, I have said, I just want you to know how insanely jealous I am of you guys being able to be heard at all times in all parts of the market. Because we're over here with a pea shooter. And we're trying to hang in there and trade blow for blow. But, yeah. But... No less than, say, five years ago, the two stations were roughly on par with each other in ratings. And it's because many owners ago, 
when we were owned, and I think we've been owned by four different entities, this will be the fifth. Oh, this is like seven. I came back uh, to D.C. Well, yeah, but there were other mergers. We want to count them? Uh, AM, uh, FM, and acquisitions. Broadcasting. When I came back in 99, <laughs> was it AMFM? Yes, that's was it. AM FM in '99 when I came back. It was okay. Clear Channel when I started in 2000. And that then became, and there were still AM FM stickers uh, on a lot of equipment. So I was like, "Oh, is this the company that used to own it?" And and my and exactly. Scott and CJ were like, "Yes, we used to be AM FM Broadcasting." And then Clear Channel Broadcasting. AM FM was sold. AM FM was sold to Dan Snyder and his newfound company called Red Zebra Broadcasting. In I want to say 2000. 12? No, oh, 08. Is that possible? It's right. It's impossible. It's 2008. Oh, even, er- even earlier. Oh, yes. Eight. Okay. 2008, right, clear fine. channel radio while, while liquidating hundreds of stations around the country. Uh, oh, so yeah. Sold us as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're like, yeah, get out, get out, get out. So, um, you know, uh, Dan formed this company and, uh, and, and operated it. And I will say this he never once yeah. said anything about me or to me never once sent his minions to try to clip my wings in terms of saying you know don't don't say this don't say that i'll at least give him credit for that although i almost feel a bit insulted uh. i didn't go at you hard enough uh. in order for you to at least raise your voice and say shut that afternoon I, guy up. i was told once but anyway by our, our old boss bruce just keep it professional never attack him personally and you'll never hear a word from dan snyder and that we didn't for ten years. Yeah. That was a, we didn't for eight years. That at was least. that was the one <laughs> silver lining. Team. Yes, that that was the one silver lining. But what happened was, all of the good people that were working uh, for the station at every level, whether it was general manager, sales manager, salespeople, promotions, program directors, or whatever, right. they quickly found out what time it was and they started to leave one after another, after another, after another. So there was this talent drain, and then you're left with. A football owner who's got a standalone company that's trying to do sports radio in a very competitive marketplace. And shocker, like everything else he's touched, it went straight to. <laughs> and so the decline began. And then there, there were people in charge who made some of the most outrageously <laughs> bad decisions. Do I need to list the show that shall not be mentioned? Where's right? Let's Go Caps Lloyd? So that's still that, on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget, Sally, the uh, <clears throat> exchange I had uh, with uh, Anthony, who was one of our, I think, nicer, better sales guys. Oh, Anthony right? Verney, yeah, Anthony. our guy. He's up in uh, Baltimore yeah, now, right. I believe. Yeah, yeah. You're doing well. So, uh, Great so guy. Verney comes by. I, I, this is back when I had an office, and he, he comes by, and he's moving fast. He's a he's a fast mover. You know, he's always on the go. Got to sell, got to sell, got to sell. Moving fast. He comes by my door. It's open. He sees that I'm in there, does an abrupt stop, does a half-step reverse, pokes his head in and says to me in this amazingly exasperated voice, you've heard, you've heard the show, right? You've heard it. And I go, yeah. He goes, it, it, it's going to get better, isn't it? I go, nope. And he then gave me, true story, Sally, he then gave me an expression that was of sheer exasperation because it wasn't his choice to launch this show. And he just, he kind of threw his hands up and he disappeared down the hallway about as fast as possible. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't have the heart to lie to him. I was just, as an experienced guy in radio, this is all I've ever done in my professional life. And I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Oh, by the way, that's a whole other story unto not itself. Now. But, uh, <clears throat> well, not even a while ago, I, I wouldn't Well, before it to podcasts and Internet and streams and HBO Max and, and, and Sirius XM has just started a podcast division. I'm like, great, they need more ears on their product. It was a viable I mean, business, uh, this radio. It's still a viable it's business. It's still Look, a viable business. Intercom, is, it, Inter- Intercom has acquired us, and they say they're right. going to run the hamburger stand they got, which is doing well, and the hot dog stand that has been shut down by the health department. Well, why would they take the most talented and, person in radio, Steve Zabin, and not have him come with them? That would just be foolishness. Foolishness. I don't know. I don't know what their plans are. And if, if they had plans to bring me, this segment could be killing it right now. So you could be watching me oh, jump no, off a no, cliff no. into the rocks. I don't know. Wait, they're pulling I, me I out of the no, studio no, now. The, the, I, the guys God. in the white oh suits. God, that's it for me. me. <laughs> By the way, this is the second time I've I've been told with only hours until showtime. Oh, yeah. The guy that is your wingman or your co-host is gone. This happened to me with Andy. 
uh, back when he got let go in, oh, God, I wish I had better command of the Well, and he's been let go uh, twice. About 2013 and 20... No, but that would have been about 2016. 2016 as well, yes. Or 20, yes. Uh, and, uh, yes, 2017. Yeah, he was let go twice. But the first time he was let go after, and Andy and I did the sports reporters for all those years. Uh, hey, Zabe, know, we're kicking like out Andy, and you're getting Cooley and Gawley. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Wasn't that it? No, no, that, it wasn't that. Uh-huh. That was not the change that was made. I think I forget what the no, change was. No, that was the 20, was told, 2013. Like, the sports reporters ended, and Cooley, Zabe, Galdi started. Right. Yes. Exactly. And we did and that then, for uh, two and a half but years. Then the second time. Yes, Andy came back in the 20, second time 2016. Around when he came back, and we flipped the roles, and I was driving the show, and Andy was the two instead of the other way around. That lasted for a year. A, a year. year and 20, and a half, 2016 like to 2017. Yeah. Right. But then they, they said, all right, Andy's up, and we're not renewing him. He's out. And I literally learned like an hour before the show. So, hey, everybody. Hi. Welcome to the show. Like, no time to process it whatsoever. And that's the case today, as I found out this this morning. And, um, yeah, so all these different ownership groups, uh, entities like football teams with owners who turn everything straight to dust, uh, will atrophy a station big time, along with the fact that, you know, we got a pea shooter of a signal. That they do have a repeater on it now, which is nice, 95.9 FM, ding, ding, ding. They've got an app, which uh, is going to be, that's I think, not, sunsetted. 95.9 is uh, not part of the new, uh, that's staying with Urban Oh, one. so that's gone now. Okay. That's staying well, with Well, Monday one. is when they take over officially. Right. Okay. Well, they, but at least the old company, and by the way, let me say this about Urban One, okay? Alfred Liggins couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson couldn't Wilson, have been nicer. Our, they, our immediate they boss here. They treated us, they treated us royally. They were wonderful as a company to be with. They just didn't know how to run sports radio. It's not in their skill set. That's part of why they flipped the station uh, to somebody who does. Now, Intercom, this is what they do. They do sports radio, so they know how to block and tackle and promote and sell and everything else, and that's crucial. That helps one's success. But you combine all these bad decisions, all these different ownership groups, the the curse of Dan Snyder, and then a well-meaning operator that just didn't have it in their skill set, here we are. And it sucks because we're in the feel-good biz that we try to be every day. We are in the cracking towels, busting balls, not a care in the world, and you, the listener, get to sit in with us in your car and listen every day, and then you say, hopefully, at the end of your ride, you go, oh, traffic. There was traffic. I didn't even notice. I was laughing because I was having fun with the guys. You don't get to be in this business uh, sad and just morose and just walk through the paces of, well, the Seahawks won last night. Boo. Entertain. Dance. Monkey. Make a show for people. Be happy. All right? You could be slinging a hot tar mop on a roof. That said, my heart is heavy because Scotland is the hardest working, least complaining, most professional, do everything guy I have ever known. And I'll never forget the first day that I walked into the building three buildings ago when I moved here from Charlotte after I got fired in Charlotte after one month of a new morning show with a brand new baby girl just That's delivered. Right. And the said, I'm sorry, it's not working out. I'm like, it's been a month. I just delivered a baby. You're going to fire, fire me. Oh, okay. All right. Well, and, then you, and then you, and of course, then you go fight fought, tooth and nail. Yeah, for your money for months, right? Oh, yeah. Months. I mean, I took pennies on the dollar. You know, contract that I uh, stupidly negotiated myself and uh, did not have a agent or a lawyer look at. And so then it you know, came time to try to collect on it, and it was a it was a tooth and nail fight to scrap back whatever I could. But I lived, by the way. And, you know, and Scott's going to live because he's too smart and too talented, but it's obviously a terrible time right now. But, you know, hardest working, least complaining, most professional, do everything kind of guy. And when there's a regime change, who knows? They might just say, don't need you, or you're not our flavor, or too expensive. I don't know what goes into that decision making. I really don't. And as I say to people, you know, I don't run this business because it is the least portable, least portable, most specialized industry right. I can think of. We're not accountants or words, engineers. Hey, I talk sports on the radio. 
Right. I, I talk sports on the radio. Okay, well, I just got let go here in Washington. Can I go down to this city or can I go to that city? Charlotte, Chicago, Detroit, New York. Not really because they want you to talk about their teams. They want you to have some level of locality and history with the area and be able to talk it. Now, there are guys that do move, and I'm not saying it never happens, but it's hard. There's very little portability, and it's very specialized. And then the avenues to get paid – a, a, a nice salary are very narrow and they're treacherous and they can cave in on you at any time. Need I bring up another recent news event with, uh, well, I guess our sister or big daddy station. What do we call 1067? Our daddy? Do I have to be like, uh, you know, uh, Pedro Martinez? I call you a daddy. Well, I believe on I Monday, no uh, the, uh, the cake, avenues to cakes and lurch will all be, will both be kicking us in the ass as we walk in the buildings. If we're, if we are walking in the buildings, it's, yeah. it's part of the new ritual. If no. we're even going to the new building, which I don't think it'll be on Monday. <laughs> I, I don't if know. anyone goes to buildings anymore, that's the Well, that's the thing. Can. That's the good thing about, uh, so I recommend about that. You can, you can, you can do a show, uh, while Steve, you know, some people do their show from their house and in other, other cities. It's very possible right now. You don't have to. Move to a city. You can do this anywhere in the world based because of the internets and technology now. And uh, our friend uh, Tim Murray just texted me to remind me. It was January 20th, 2017, because that was the day he and Andy and Jovers sure. and Nick were all let go at the same time. Yep. Like, yep. Oh, yes, yeah. Inauguration yeah, Day. Exactly. Just uh, that's, that's the day they all do it, usually. Yeah. My, my recommendation is uh, find a steady, recession-proof line of work like selling insurance like the government being a grave digger people are always going to die people always need insurance and then you can be a fan who calls other idiots on the radio you'd be a fan on your own time you pick the sports you want to be a fan of and you're still a sports fan but you got a steady income and you could you know transfer it it's uh, what i would recommend but the allure is great now look I'm not complaining. As Chico Escuela once said on Saturday Night Live, baseball has been very, very good to me. The industry has been very, very good to me, but I, as, I owe as much of it to my hard work and good looks, by the way, uh, and my rapier wit. I owe as much of it to just pure luck, pure dumb luck, and, and by the way, swallowing an Andy Dufresne river up from stupid heads in the business along the way. The compromise and retreating. As Al Swearingen once said on Deadwood, is endless in this business. You have to make those compromises. And when you've got a family and you've got to provide, you have to say to yourself, well, I'd love to tell them to go pound sand, but I can't, at least not right now. <laughs> so I'm going to miss Scott beyond comprehension. He has been the most dependable wingman. He has been the most seamless guy with me. I've spent so many hours back and forth, the endless banter. Scott's wealth of knowledge, he, I would never throw something at him about. Remember that time somebody did something and he would just sit there and like stare at me like a dog that didn't know what was going on? No, he knew. He remembers. That depth of knowledge is remarkable. And his quick Google fingers and his characters that he grew into, like Evil Jack and Elmo and all these other bits we had done, the fact that we could no look past to each other on any given day. I mean, we did the show for quite a few years with no video connection, no Skype connection, because it didn't matter, because we knew each other's moves. And so now that's been kicked out from under me, and I've got to figure out what's going to happen next and we'll get the new marching orders from the company and you know we'll see what happens from here but um god dang i'm gonna miss him this business sucks and i guess away we go <sighs> seahawks 28 cardinals 21 <laughs> i'll have to get the, the baseball final score soon. last night 28 20 yeah, probably not yes. even the score they won by seven they covered 28 21 exactly yes. seahawks 28 Cardinals 21. Your thoughts, your tributes to the great Scott Lynn, uh, who we will miss. The Turk came knocking for him today. Poll question is up. What will you miss most about Scott? Is it the seamless banter with me, the Elmo Evil Jack characters, the info <laughs> and the quick Googling, or the eating cold cuts straight out of the paper? Vote now at Team 980 and uh, leave a comment as well uh, to tell Scott how much you miss him and you loved hearing him on the radio. We are up and running and functioning as professionals right here on a Friday in the DMV.